Morning everybody, so I've not managed to get out on the course for the last couple of weeks due to the terrible weather and I'm sure most of you, in the, so some of you are actually in the same boat in the UK. Um, it's not raining now, so hopefully I might get out and do a little bit of um, chipping and putting practice this weekend, all being well, but the purpose of this little vlog is um, on Twitter a couple of weeks ago I did a little, um, a little bit of blurb about doing some tips and handy hints, shall we call it, on how to um, drop a few pounds. So, so I've seen a few people saying about they're going to use the winter not just to help um, focus on the golf and practice the golf, but they're actually going to use it to, you know, either shed a few pounds or get a bit healthier, get a bit fitter, which will obviously in turn help your game. So, bear with me. Don't turn off at this point because you might just pick up a handy tip. And if you get to the end and you haven't, I apologise for wasting your time. So, first of all, I just want to put it out there that when you say you're going on a diet, the principle of what you're saying is, is right, but you're actually not going on a diet. So, the definition of a diet according to the Cambridge Dictionary, sorry, I'm using my phone for some, for some uh, notes here, um, food and drink usually eaten or drunk by a person or group, which means if you are a person who eats and drinks anyway, you have a diet. So what you're actually do, like, trying to do is you're changing your diet for a healthy one. You're not going on a diet because you already have a diet. It just may not be a very healthy one. So I'm putting that out there first. You're not going on a diet, you're changing your diet habits. So where I come in is about two or four years ago now, so it would be August 2015, I came home one day and I was sick of being overweight and I wanted to, to lose weight. I said to Neil, you're coming to Slimming World with me. You can imagine his response. No, I am not. Needless to say, the next day we both went to Slimming World. <sighs> I win. So at the time, um, I will just, I'll put up, actually, I'll put up now um, some before photos of us. So take a look at these. These are what we look like beforehand. So you can see by that that we're both completely different now. If you've seen any of my vlogs with Neil in, you'll see that we both look completely different. And that is all down to following a healthier lifestyle change of eating habits. Because the thing is, people go on diets to lose weight and as soon as they've lost the weight, they go back to eating what they used to do. Which means you're going to put it all back on. What was the point? So Slimmer World is... It's not a diet, and I'm not a consultant for Slimming World, so don't get me wrong, but it's not a diet, it's a healthy eating plan, and you're changing habits for life. You're not just changing it just to, to satisfy your need at that point to, to lose a bit of weight. You're actually making a lifestyle change, and that's the key thing here, is lifestyle change. So, we both got to target within about eight or nine months, so we've both been at our target weight for about three and a half years now. So, needless to say, whatever we're doing, it's working because we've not only lost the weight, we've lost, we've actually stuck to it as well. So overall, I lost three, three stone ten, and Neil lost about two and a half stone. So that's quite a bit of weight to lose. Um, and we're both a lot healthier now for it. We're both a lot fitter, and we both took up golf two and a half years ago. And I don't think if I'd have lost the weight, if I'd not lost the weight, I probably wouldn't have taken up golf if I'm honest, because I wouldn't have had the fitness levels needed. I will just point out as well with fitness levels, that in all that time, I did not go to the gym, and neither did Neil. And the reason for me not wanting to go to the gym is, again, it's like when, you, when you're going on a diet. Um, if you go to the gym, you get fitter, you get toned, all that jazz. And if you soon as you stop going because you've achieved what you want to look like, your toning is going to go back to flab again. And for me, it's a lot of effort, and I'm not going to keep up the gym. I hate the gym. I'm not a gym bunny, so why put myself through that, all that pain and torture to get a result that I'm not going to maintain at all? And I know I won't maintain it because I hate the gym, so what's the point? But nevertheless, we still lost all that weight just by changing what we ate. So what I'm going to do is just give you a few little tips on, on the ways that you might be able to change your lifestyle, and it might might have a bit of a knock-on effect, you might lose a few pounds, you might get a bit fitter, who knows, but you know, 
a healthier lifestyle can mean a longer life. So why not? So a few, few tips for you here. Um, some people when they're cooking they use oils, which is fine. But when you're pouring oils into your pan to cook with, you've got no control over how, how many calories you're actually using. So change to um, spray oils, like this kind of thing. Um, so it's got oil in it, you just use like a sprayer, spray pan, God knows how many times, until you've got enough oil in there that you need. Um, and then start frying off whatever you're cooking. So a little small change like that can make a massive difference. If you don't want to use the brands out there, like the Fry Light and the, all the, the other more local shop brands, just buy a little, a little like a spray bottle and put your own oil in it. By spraying the oil, you use a lot less. Uh, the other thing you can also try is um, if you're cooking things like bacon, dry frying, or use a little bit of water to fry things off in. Obviously the water will evaporate, so you just keep adding a little bit of water until you've got the desired colour of whatever food you're cooking. So, small tip, big change. Uh, another thing, if you drink a lot of fizzy drinks, try and change to sugar-free drinks or diet drinks. It, some people will say, but I don't, I don't like the taste of it, which is fine, but when you've drunk it for a couple of weeks, believe it or not, your taste does change, so you're not going to go back to eat, drinking all that sugar-free crap. So before we started this diet, this, I keep wanting to call it a diet, because I'm talking about diets, and it's not a diet. Before we changed our lifestyle, I very rarely used to drink fizzy pop anyway. But now, I probably do drink a lot more than I used to, but we drink Pepsi Max, or if you go to Aldi, they do a, a, a version of Pepsi Max, it's Cola X or something, something X anyway, and it's about a quarter of the price, if not less. And it, it's, it's all right, actually. It's not a bad uh, substitute for Pepsi Max. Um, what else have we got? Ah, I think I'm just deleting my notes. There we go. So, again, tea and coffee. If you drink it with sugar, just try and cut in a little bit of sugar out. Do like half a spoon at a time. A few years ago, when I first met Neil, well, 12 years ago, I used to take two sugars in tea and coffee. And now I take none. Because I think when we started... Um, Slimmer World, I cut it down to one sugar, and then over that time, I just I then got down to about half half a sugar, and then changed it for sweetener. But then I just got to the stage where you know what, I'm just going to stop drinking a bit of sugar in it. But now I, I do actually drink my coffee with oat milk in it. Now some people will probably go Ugh, oat milk, but actually it's really nice and it makes your coffee quite creamy, and it's it's a lot better for you than cow's milk. I also use oat milk on porridge as well. That's another good tip. I know it's a bit weird, oats and oat milk, but again, it makes it really nice and creamy. Um, another tip for your porridge is what, what we've, well, a couple of tips actually. What we've started doing now is we want to buy the frozen fruit, take it out the night before, put a bit of sweetener on it. By the time you come to do your porridge in the morning, trick, make it up, trick your fruit on, happy days, nice healthy breakfast. Another one, if you do actually want a little bit more indulgent breakfast when it comes to your porridge, is if you use coconut milk in your porridge, once it's cooked, if you do the little chocolate lint balls, or even uh, I've been known to use uh, a Nutella type chocolate spread before, put a blob of that in your, in your uh, porridge that's been made with coconut, and it tastes like you're eating a bounty. Oh, man, that's good. So it's just a little bit of a indulgence there. And again, it's because you're eating a, health, a fairly healthy breakfast, a little bit of chocolate in your breakfast won't make that much difference. So try that one if you like bounties. Uh, let's have a look. Milk options. So I don't drink a lot of cow's milk now, purely because on Silverboard you get like an allowance, a, a dairy allowance, shall we say, and you get more milk allowance if you use coconut milk or oat milk than you do cow's milk. So I tend to use that now because I drink a lot of coffee. Um, some people like it, some people don't, but do you know what? Give it a go. It might just open your eyes a little bit and, and you might like it. Trust me. Another little, little tip is when you get in your meat at the supermarket, try and go for your 5% fat mints because it's again lower in fat. Any, any meat, other meat you buy, try and get it with not, not a lot of fat on. Now a lot of people that eat steaks are probably going, yeah, but I like steak with a big bit of fat on. That's fine. But just think what that fat's doing to you. If you're trying to lose a bit of weight, what is that fat doing to you? No good for you. Cut it out. Stop it. I can't stand fat. I've never, to be fair, I've never eaten fat on meat. It's vile. So, so I, instead of buying bacon as well, I, I tend to just to buy the bacon medallions. 
because I cut all the fat off anyway and I always have done so it's a bit of a waste of, waste of money buying all that rest of that bacon when it goes in the bin sorry a lot of you probably look at me going oh you put bacon in the bin yes I put the fatty bacon in the bin it's horrible um, another really good one actually and this is probably quite good if you've got kids that don't eat a lot of veg this is a really good one to use so pasta sauces um, they're the, the dead easy to make don't bother buying them because they're so easy to make it's basically just tomatoes and, and herbs so I'm not a big vegetable person I never really have been I tend to only eat peas and carrots or I used to now I do eat a little bit more I eat baby corn monge to uh, I do make a wicked pumpkin and lentil soup but I wouldn't eat a pumpkin if you put it on a plate not a chance anyway I do a um, a seven veg sauce and I think I sort of borrowed it off of a I don't know if it was either I think it was Jamie Oliver I think it's one of his recipes that I've just kind of taken and tweaked a little bit so this, in this pasta sauce there's seven vegetables in this pasta sauce so you've got peppers, onions peppers, onions, butternut squash leeks, carrots, celery and aubergine and then you cook it all down and add some herbs into it and then you add tins of um, tins of tomatoes cook it down a bit further and then you blitz it all up together and it just tastes like tomato like a bolognese sauce or a, a, a tomato sauce that you can use for loads of different things like lasagnas bolognese you can even use it as like a shepherd's pie base if you want to it's but it's got loads and loads of vegetables in it and if your kids don't eat veg trust me they will eat this because my grandkids love this and they don't realise that you're eating all that veg because they don't like, well, our Charlie doesn't like half of that vegetables. I don't like half them vegetables, but I eat it. So I'm getting extra vegetables and extra protein, not protein, extra vitamins and stuff that I don't realise I'm getting. That's a top tip actually, do that, try it, so let me know what you think. So when it comes to snacky bits, so again on Slimmer World, it's not one of them eating plans where it says you cannot eat this, you cannot eat that, you cannot eat the other. Because it's like, well, if you're going to tell me what I can't eat, I'm not doing it. And it's it's trying to sort of drill home. Eat everything in moderation. You know, don't. Uh, the more you tell yourself, I'm not allowed that, I'm not allowed to eat that, I'm not allowed to eat that, the more you will want it. I went through a phase probably a couple of years ago, in fact, it was before I got to Target actually, where I really wanted pizza. I just got this hankering and I, was, I needed a pizza, I needed one, I didn't just want one, I needed it. And I kept telling myself, you don't have it, don't have it, because it's so, you get what's called sins. So I can get 15 sins a day and Neil gets 20 sins a day. So to put that into perspective, a pint of beer is 10 sins. So you could have two pints of beer a day. Everything that's naughty has got a sin value to it. So you can work out what you're allowed. So pizzas... The average, if you go to say, something like Domino's or Papa John's, an average, a medium sized pizza, if you get something like a Hawaiian, the average sin value for one slice is about seven and a half sins. Now at one point I would, I would have eaten a full pizza to myself, I probably still would actually, but half a pizza is about 22 and a half sins. So because I wanted it that bad, I just say some sins over a few days and I have my pizza. And once I'd had it, I was fine then. I didn't want it anymore because I'd had it. But all the while I was telling myself I wasn't allowed to have it, my God, I would have killed for that thing. But, you know, everything in moderation. Don't deny yourself things that you want because you can have them. You just have to make allowances for them. So back to sweetie things. So if you like crisps, I'm more of a savoury person. I do, I do like a good bag of crisps. A lot of them... You're probably looking at about 10 sins a bag, 8, 10, 12 sins a bag, depending on what they are. So I look for just alternatives. Um, we have, if you've heard of Pom Bears, we have Tesco's own version of like the bunnies. And they're, they're quite nice, actually. But your, your lower sort of calorie, your lower sin value ones are like Skips, What's It's, Quavers, Space Raiders. They're really good, then. Um, there's ones called Snaps, they're like a tomato, sort of tomato flavour. It's supposed to be my spicy tomato, but they're not really spicy. They're really nice, actually. And chocolate, again, before I started on Slimmer World, I didn't used to eat a massive amount of chocolate, and I probably eat more chocolate now. 
after even though I've lost all the weight. So your good ones to go to are uh, Little Freddos, uh, Curly Whirlies are really good. Um, Kit Kat to get two finger Kit Kat. Fudge, anything small. I like kid size chocolate bars. They're really good because they're quite low in calories, low in sin value. So it it is just eating things in moderation. Even when you go out, it until you've actually sort of got to your target where you want to be, you do have to sort of be a bit more conserv conservative about what you're eating. And then once you get to your target, you can kind of loosen the reins a little bit, not go back to what you were, because you're going to put all your weight back on again. But lo loosen them off and just have a little bit more, a few more treats. So if you're going to go out to eat. If you go out for a curry, for example, look for a tomato-based sauce. Um, I can't really think of any off hand because I don't tend to eat them. Um, I don't really like the tomato-based ones, but anything that's got a tomato base in the, in the recipe, go for them because they're generally better for you. And Nando's is quite a good one to go out to because it's just chicken. Um, but overall, if you if you're looking to lose, you know, shed a few pounds or just change your lifestyle for a healthier lifestyle to help to prolong your life you know and your family's life there may be a few tips in there that you can pick up just want to just change one or two things and you'd be amazed at the differences that you can actually make with it so i hope you've um i hope you've picked up a tip or two you know if, if you haven't thanks for watching anyway and you may be able to pass some of these tips on to somebody else that you know might be you know might be struggling but likewise if you've got any tips yourself put them in the comments below somebody else might uh you know, pick up a tip or two. It's it's good to share these these bits of information. So I will also put some photos up at the end of this of our after. Obviously, you've seen us, you know what we look like. But I've got some quite good before and after photos uh, for before we started losing the weight and when we hit target. So I'll put those up just so you can see the difference that eight or nine months made to us. And as I say, we've we've, we've stuck to that, and three and a half years down the line, we're still at target weight. So. I must be doing something right. I must have a little bit of a little bit of knowledge in what I'm doing. Otherwise I'd have put it all back on. And I am not buying another new wardrobe. Not a chance. It was expensive in our first time round. So um I'll leave you with that. I'll leave you with some photos. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you have picked up a tip or two. Um and I will catch you soon on that golf course. Have a great day everyone. See you later. Bye.